الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد Continuing on, this is the second part of our series of lectures about the importance of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the status of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and in the third part of our lecture or the third part of the series we will talk about and highlight some of the important foundations of the Shiite creed. So in this section, we'll talk about the companions of the Prophet ﷺ as we have already illustrated and spoken uh, extensively about the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an and makes clear for us, قَالَ سُبْحَانَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَصَابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اَعْتَبُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رضي الله عنه ورضوا عنه وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah subhanahu <coughs> in the Qur'an, He mentions, He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the first to lead the way of the muhajireen and the ansar, and those who followed them in goodness, Allah is well pleased with them. And they are well pleased with him. And he hath made ready for them gardens underneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide forever. That is the supreme triumph. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah has praised the muhajireen and the, and the ansar. Who are the muhajireen? The muhajireen are those people who made hijrah. They immigrated from Mecca to Medina. And who are the Ansar? The Ansar are the people who greeted them, who were the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, who were the people of Medina. Allah mentioned them specifically in the Qur'an. So if Allah praises someone and loves someone, it is from Iman for us to praise and love those same people. That's from Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the Qur'an, Muhammad Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشَدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ Ruhama Bainahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the Quran, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those with him are hard against the disbelievers and merciful amongst themselves. Thou, O Muhammad, seest them bowing and falling prostrate in worship, seeking bounty from Allah and his acceptance. The mark of them is on their foreheads from the traces of prostration. Such is their likeness in the Torah and their likeness in the Gospel. Like a, sown, like a sown corn that sendeth forth its shoot and strengthens, and it rises firm upon its stock, delighting the, the people who sow the seeds, that he may enrage the disbelievers with the sight of them. Allah hath promised unto such of them as believe and do good works, forgiveness and immense reward. So this is the case for the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the Muhajireen wal Ansar. And this is the case, as Allah mentions in the last part of the verse, those people who believe. And they do righteous deeds. They believe and they do righteous deeds. And for them is forgiveness and great reward from their Lord. So it takes Iman. Iman Billah. And Iman in the rest of the pillars of Iman. And also it is a part of Iman, loving the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, as he illustrated for us in the authentic sunnah. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَلِلْفُقْرَى الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أَخْرِجُوا مِن دِيَارِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِدْوَانًا وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ 
sadiqun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here also about the muhajireen, those people who immigrated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, and it is for the poor, the poor people who immigrate, who have been driven out of their homes and their belongings, who seek bounty from Allah and help Allah and His Messenger. They are the ones who are loyal. Those are the ones who are truthful. So here Allah is praising those people, those people who immigrated from their homes. They left their wealth and their property. And why did they do it? They did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They made hijrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As what the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith about the niyyah, about our intentions, being sincere for Allah, and may Allah bless us with sincere intentions. The Prophet sallallahu said, إِنَّمَا أَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَادِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِنْ مَنَاوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجُتُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ فَهِجُتُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ so in that part of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَةُ وَلَاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ فَهِجْرَةُ وَلَاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ So whoever's hijra, whoever immigrates for Allah and His Messenger, then his migration was for Allah and His Messenger. That shows us that the intention is, is important. The intention has to be pure. That when you do immigration, it's a very high level of ibadah, a very high level of worship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it pleases Allah. And who were the first people to migrate? Were the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. And that's the point, is mentioning that this great act of worship, they were first and foremost in doing it. They were first and foremost in aiding Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, and aiding the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Qatada, radiallahu ta'ala an, one of the, the tabi'een, he stated regarding the verse that we mentioned, the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it is for the poor immigrants who have been driven out from their homes and their belongings, who seek bounty from Allah and help Allah and His Messenger. They are the loyal ones, or they are the truthful ones. Qatada said about this verse, explaining it, he said, those muhajireen, meaning those immigrants, that left their homes, their wealth and their families out of love for Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and chose Islam although it required sacrifice and difficulty. Even though it was mentioned to us that a man from amongst them would tie a rock on his stomach to help endure the hunger pains. Is this not the greatest sacrifice? What kind of sacrifice have we made for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's deen? for Allah's religion. Can we even begin to compete with the status of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, never. The, the answer is clear. There's no way that we can compare ourselves to the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it shows their praiseworthiness and that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves them and is pleased with them as he mentioned all throughout the Quran. And as collected in Bukhari, in Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, <clears throat> he said, Allah's apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a time will come upon the people when a group of people will wage a holy war. And it will be said, is there amongst you anyone who has accompanied Allah's apostle? They will say, yes. And so victory will be bestowed upon them. Then a time will come upon the people when a group, when a, a, a group of the people will wage a holy war and it will be said, is there amongst you none who has accompanied the companions of Allah's apostle? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will say yes. And so victory will be bestowed upon them. Then will come a time upon the people when a group of people will wage a holy war and it will be said, is there amongst you anyone who has been in the company of the companions of the companions of Allah's apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They will say yes, and victory will be bestowed upon them. So this shows us, this is victory. The, by accompanying the companions, then we have Allah's help, Allah's assistant. How can we accompany the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this time? By following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By loving the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, being pleased with them, refraining, holding our tongues and from speaking ill about them, and practicing and understanding the religion and the creed, especially the creed and the fiqh and the manners 
in the way that they understood it, in the way that they, they, they practiced. As the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they didn't, they took and accepted the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ by the way that the Prophet ﷺ uh, mentioned it. And they only, you know, went uh, and, and asked for the Prophet ﷺ to explain further if they didn't understand something. But other than that, they knew the Arabic language and it was clear for them. And they just followed. سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا they listened and they obeyed the commandments of the Prophet ﷺ. And they were the best of this ummah. As was narrated in Bukhari, narrated Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The best of my followers are those living in my generation, meaning my contemporaries. Then those who follow the latter. Imran radiallahu ta'ala anhu added, I do not remember whether he mentioned two or three generations after his generation. Then the Prophet ﷺ added, there will come after you people who will bear witness without being asked to do so, and will be treacherous and untrustworthy, and they will vow and never fulfill their vows. And fatness or obesity will appear amongst them. So we want to be like the, the companions. We want to love the companions. As the Prophet ﷺ loved the companions and spoke about them. Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu in another hadith in Bukhari. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the people saying, Allah has given option to a slave to choose this world or what is with him, meaning what is with Allah. The slave has chosen what is with Allah. Abu Bakr wept radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And we were astonished at his weeping caused by what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned as to a slave of Allah who had been offered a choice. We learned later that Allah's Apostle ﷺ himself was the person who was given the choice. And that Abu Bakr knew best of all of us. Allah's Messenger ﷺ add, uh, added, the person who, was favored, uh, who has favored me most of all both with his company and wealth is Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. If I were to take a Khalil other than my Lord, I would have taken Abu Bakr as such. But what relates us is the Islamic brotherhood and friendliness. All the gates of the mosque should be closed except the gate of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, anhum ajma'een, meaning all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah be pleased with them all, because they all served Islam. Narrated Ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, we used to compare the people as to who was better during the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We used to regard Abu Bakr as the best, then Umar, then Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Narrated uh, Ammar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I saw Allah's apostle, and there was none with him but five slaves, two women and Abu Bakr, meaning that those were the first converts to Islam at that, at that stage. So Abu Bakr helped the religion with his wealth and his property and his sacrifice. He believed in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He believed in him. He believed in Allah and His Messenger. He, he listened when he heard that the Prophet ﷺ was getting rev revelation, he was the first to believe. He believed it, he, he accepted it. No uh, challenging him, no asking, no second doubt. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Narrated Abu Darda, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, another companion of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, while I was sitting with the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr came lifting up one corner of his garment, uncovering his knee. The Prophet ﷺ said, your companion has had a quarrel, meaning he has had an argument. Abu Bakr greeted the Prophet ﷺ and said, O oh Allah's Apostle, there was something between me and the son of Al-Khattab I talked to him harshly and then regretted that and requested for him to forgive me, but he refused. This is why I've come to you come to you. The Prophet ﷺ said three times, O oh Abu Bakr, may Allah forgive you. In the meanwhile, Umar who regretted his refusal of Abu Bakr's excuse. And he went to Abu Bakr's house and asked if Abu Bakr was there. 
They replied in the negative. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ and greeted him. But signs of displeasure appeared on the face of the Prophet ﷺ till Abu Bakr pitied Umar. So he knelt and said twice, O oh Allah's Apostle, by Allah, I was more unjust to him than he to me. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah sent me as a prophet to you people. But you said to me, you are telling a lie. Why Abu Bakr said, he has said the truth and consoled me with himself and his money. Then he said three times, won't you then give up harming my companion? After that, no one ever harmed Abu Bakr. It was narrated by Abu Sa'id, or Abu Sa'id. The Prophet said, do not abuse my companions. For if any one of you spent gold equal to Uhud in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's cause, it would not be equal to a mud, to a mud or even half a mud spent by one of them. Is this not illustrating the, the status of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ? Aren't they عنه, the best of this ummah? As the Prophet ﷺ said, and we already mentioned that in the authentic hadith, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that the best people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It was narrated by Ibn Abbas in Sahih al-Bukhari where he said, while I was standing amongst the people who were invoking Allah for Umar bin al-Khattab who was lying dead on his bed. Can you imagine that? What sadness that, 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 that it should bring us just reading these ahadith of the Prophet the type of sadness. Can you imagine Amir al-Mu'mineen Abu Hafs laying dead on his bed, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, to see that, that, that should bestow sadness. So in this hadith, Ibn, uh, Ibn Ab uh, Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, while I was standing amongst the people who were invoking, they were making dua for Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who's lying dead on his bed. A man uh, behind me rested his elbows on my shoulder and said, Oh Umar, may Allah bestow his mercy upon you. I always hope that Allah will keep you with your two companions. For I often heard Allah's, uh, Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, I, Abu Bakr and Umar were somewhere. I, Abu Bakr and Umar did something. I, Abu Bakr and Umar set out. So I hope that Allah will keep you with both of them. I turned back to see that the speaker was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Narrated Ibn Abbas عنه, in another narration, he said, When the dead body of Umar عنه, was put on his deathbed, the people gathered around him and invoked Allah and prayed for him before the body was taken away. And I was amongst them. Suddenly I felt somebody taking hold of my shoulder and found out that it was uh, Ali bin Abi Talib. عنه. Ali عنه, invoked Allah's mercy for Umar and said, O oh, Umar, you have not left behind you a person whose deeds I like to emulate or imitate and meet uh, Allah more than I like your deeds. By Allah, I always thought that Allah would keep you with your two companions. For every often, every so often, I used to hear the Prophet wasallam saying, I Abu Bakr and Umar went somewhere. I Abu Bakr and Umar entered somewhere. I Abu Bakr and Umar went out. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. This is how the Prophet sallallahu was with his companions. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. So how is it that we could dispute this? How is it that we could differ with this? If you are truly a Muslim, how is it that you could, you could accept other than this? Other than loving the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa loved them. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has loved them and, and said, all throughout the Qur'an, as we've already mentioned, all the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa It was also narrated in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated uh, Sa'ad ibn Ubaidah, 
radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a man came to Ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and asked about Uthman. And Ibn Umar mentioned, uh, he mentioned his good deeds and he said to the questioner, perhaps these facts annoy you. The man said, yes. Ibn Umar said, may Allah stick your nose in the dust, meaning to degrade you. The man asked him about Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Umar mentioned his good deeds. And then he said, it's all true. And that is his house in the midst of the houses of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Perhaps these facts annoy you. Or perhaps these facts have hurt you. The questioner said, yes. Ibn Umar said, may Allah stick your nose in the dust. Go away and do whatever you can against me. This is how the, the ghira, this is the love that the companions had for one another. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. This is how they, the love and the ghira that they had for the religion of Islam. This is how they dealt with the people who innovated. Why is this an innovation? Because these people disputed in creed. How is this an issue of creed? This is an issue of creed because these are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And it's mentioned all throughout the books of creed. Go back to the early, uh, early books. You'll find chapters mentioned about what? The, pra the praiseworthiness of the Sahaba. Fadail al-Sahaba, the, 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 the benefits of the Sahaba. All throughout the books of creed. Even the books of hadith. They have abwab mustaqilla. They have ba uh, uh, chapters that are uh, singled out and specified. Mentioning the, 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 the manners of the companions, the benefits of the companions. Go back, go to Bukhari, go to Muslim, go to Sunan Abi Dawood, go to Tirmidhi, go to any of the books. Go to the books of Creed, the early books, the Salaf al-Saleh. They defended the Creed of Islam. And they held that loving the companions of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam was an important creed of Islam. It, it was an important point of creed. It was something that no Muslim could ever refuse and could have uh, evil uh, or, or, or have harshness in their heart to dispute this beautiful and important fact that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam were chosen by him. First and foremost, they were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned in the, near, in the athar of Ibn Umar that he mentioned that, the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose those people and those people were blessed to be chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were chosen by Allah. So what do we have, do you have any uh, uh, right in this affair? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Listen, hear and obey. Follow the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and love the companions because they're the ones who preserve this deen. They're the ones who preserve the religion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're the ones who Allah cho chose and appointed to preserve the Sirat al-Mustaqim, to preserve this religion and to fight off bid'ah and, and those things which go against the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So ask yourself this question. We have to ask ourselves, how can a people be successful and considered Muslims when they go against these authentic narrations of the Prophet ﷺ? How can a people ever be successful when they seek to doubt the trustworthiness of those who carried and supported this religion? How can a people ever be successful and trusted and go forward when they question the authenticity of the Qur'an? When they undermine the judgment of the Prophet ﷺ and his choice of wives and companions, and all the positive, endearing statements he made regarding them, how can these people be successful? How can we take from these uh, uh, people? And lastly, ask yourself, can we ignore the ignorance and deception of a people whose creed is based upon cursing, meaning that this is a pillar of their creed, this is a foundation of their creed, to curse and accuse those loved by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and whose books are filled with tales from questionable men and sources whom they claim are infallible. How can we take from these people? How can we trust these people? So Muslims, beware of anyone who speaks ill about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech, meaning the Qur'an. And beware of anyone who speaks ill about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And beware of those who speak about those people who preserved and protected and sacrificed for Islam. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all, by all of His divine names and, and, and attributes, 
to bless us to be the people of Ahlul Jannah, to be the people of Jannah of Firdaus, and unite us with the prophets, all of them, alayhim after salatu wasalam, and unite us with the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, and may Allah forgive us for all of our shortcomings, and bless us to go forward, spreading his deen in a manner that plits, that, that pleases him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika na ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu, staghfiruka li man a'lamu, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات